I'm Karen Geiger, and I work for the Department of Insurance and Financial Services. I'm going to talk to you today about health insurance, what to do when things go wrong. Before we get into today's topic, I want to tell you a little bit more about the Department of Insurance and Financial Services, or DIFS. We have previously been known as the Office of Insurance and Financial Regulation, OFER, and before that, OFIS. We are about 300 state employees who work to regulate the state's insurance and financial services industry. We are fee funded and we do not require tax dollars to operate. Who do we regulate? We are the regulator, among other things, of health insurance companies, HMOs, and third party administrators. We also regulate the jakes and the flows. We regulate agents and agencies. So if you use an agent or an agency to purchase health coverage, we regulate them. Why does it matter? We work to ensure the companies we regulate are financially solvent, and we work to ensure companies are in operational compliance with statutes, and we work to make sure that Michigan consumers are protected. We want companies to follow the terms of their contract, and we want all consumers to be treated fairly. I'm just gonna go ahead and state the obvious here. Health insurance is complicated. Just to give you an idea of how complicated it is, a recent survey found that two-thirds of Americans would rather get a tooth filled than shop for health insurance. 70% would rather get a middle seat on an airplane and 75% would rather do their own taxes. Part of the reason health insurance is so complicated is that people get health coverage in several different ways. You may get coverage through your employer, a government program like Medicare or Medicaid, or you may purchase it yourself either from a health insurance company directly or from a health insurance plan chosen on the marketplace. Depending on the source and structure of your coverage, there are different state and federal statutes that dictate the terms of your coverage. Another factor complicating health coverage is the issue of self-funded versus fully insured. A lot of people who receive their health coverage from an employer, especially large employers, may be in a self-funded or a self-insured plan. What this means is that instead of purchasing an insurance product where the insurance company assumes the risk of providing benefits, the employer itself bears the risk of the employee's health care costs. It may be difficult for citizens to know they're in a self-funded plan because employers typically contract with an insurance company to act as a third-party administrator of the plan. What's most important to understand is that because self-funded plans are not an insurance product, they are not regulated by Michigan's insurance code, and they often do not have to comply with some of the requirements insurance companies have. For example, in Michigan, autism is a required benefit in insurance policies. Employers are not required to provide this coverage for autism if they self-fund their benefits. So as I've said, health insurance is complicated. Where you get your coverage and what type of coverage you have will dictate a lot. Every year presents a new opportunity to be a savvy health insurance customer. Whether your coverage is through your employer or if you purchase it directly, you should have an open enrollment period. Even with Medicare and Medicaid, you may have some annual options. This is the time to size up what you have and review any options available to you. You're going to want to read and review everything. Ask for a copy of your certificate of coverage, ask for a provider directory, and ask for a summary of benefits and coverage. Here is a sample first page of the Summary of Benefits and Coverage. These are required to be provided for all employer and inv individually purchased plans. It is a way to compare plans in an apples-to-apples -apples format. It will even give you two common healthcare scenarios so you can get an idea of how your coverage works under each scenario. This eight-page document is an excellent summary of your coverage and can give you some ballpark understanding of how your plan works. If you've reviewed the certificate of coverage, your provider directory, and your summary of benefits and coverage, and you still have questions, ask them. Call your insurance company and ask. If you cannot get a clear answer, call us. If you put your question in writing, we can ask the company to respond to us in writing. Whenever possible, it is best to have a clear understanding of your coverage before you're at the doctor's office, pharmacy, or hospital. And if you ever run into trouble with health insurance, DIFs can help. We assist consumers when things go wrong. If you run into trouble, you may want to start by contacting the company directly. If you are not satisfied with that, give us a call or file a complaint. Remember this image from a few slides ago? I talked generally about DIFFS being the regulator of health insurance companies. Can DIFFS help you with all types of coverage? Almost. We can help you with individual, small, large group insurance coverage, marketplace coverage, Medicare supplement, some Medicare Advantage issues, 
some self-funded plan issues, and some Medicaid issues. For example, with Medicaid, we cannot help if you are having an issue with eligibility or provider networks. But because Medicaid uses HMOs, we can help with contract language issues and adverse determinations. Both Medicare and Medicaid have their own complaint processes, and we would advise the consumer on all of their options, whether through our office or somewhere else. Here are some common complaints we receive involving health insurance. We often get complaints involving insurance billing issues that lead to a cancellation of a policy. Maybe the insurance company credited the wrong account with your payment and the policy cancels. Or you receive a bill for a normal monthly payment, but there is a prior or past due amount that is not included, and the policy cancels for paying the incorrect amount. Another common complaint is that you go to the doctor's office or pharmacy to use your coverage but find it was canceled and you never received a notice of cancellation or a bill. Another common complaint involves claims denials due to conflict of policy language or violation of statute. An example might be there is not enough medical documentation to support a certain medical service is medically necessary, so the claim is denied. Another example is you haven't yet met your deductible. So while it feels like the claim is denied, it is actually that you have to pay the full amount before your insurance will kick in. Or the insurance company denies a brand name prescription medication that you have been taking for years and is now stating that you have to try a different medication first. An insurer is allowed to use reasonable medical management and or change their formulary. If this happens, you should ask your provider to seek an exception through your health insurer, also called a prior authorization request. Another common complaint involves provider network issues. As you know, most insurance plans have a network of doctors and hospitals. If you go outside of it, your insurance may pay less or not at all. We get complaints such as, you went to a hospital that you knew was in your network, but a doctor or anesthesiologist was out of network. Or another issue leading to complaints involves what is called limited provider networks or sometimes exclusive provider organizations. These plans may be more economical to purchase because the network of doctors is narrow, which may work for you if you don't have a number of doctors that you currently see and you're willing to stay in the network. Where people get into trouble is that they may call up the insurance company and ask if such and such doctor participates. While that doctor may participate with some of the company's plans, but not all. This can also happen if you call a doctor's office directly. If you simply ask, do you take ABC insurance, they may say yes because they take several of ABC's plans, but they may not take all, especially one that has a more narrow network. So if you experience any of the concerns that I've just listed or any other concern about your health insurance, we ask that you fill out a complaint form. Please make sure to also send copies of any documentation that is relevant to the complaint. You can get a copy of our complaint form mailed to you, or you can print a copy from our website. You can return it via mail, fax, or email. And we have just recently added an online complaint form to better assist consumers. The online complaint form is the fastest way to get a complaint to us. And since we launched it this past year, we are now receiving over a quarter of our complaints via the online process. Here is a very broad overview of the complaint process. The complaint is received and assigned to an analyst. It is forwarded to the company, agent, and or agency for a response. A response is required within 21 days. We also have a rapid response process, which requires a four business day response time. This is a voluntary program and is usually reserved for time sensitive complaints like cancellations, prescription drug denial. If the company responds within four days, it doesn't count towards the company's complaint statistics. The complaint analyst receives a response from the company, agent, and or agency, including any documentation sent by them. And then the analyst makes a file determination. Complaint analysts are impartial in the review, make the determination based on the terms of the policy and any applicable laws. An analyst may request additional documentation, may close the case, or if further concerns exist, they refer the case to our investigations unit. The consumer receives a response from DIFFS letting the consumer know the outcome. If it was not resolved in the manner the consumer was requesting, the analyst aims to explain why the outcome was different. Oftentimes, if the response is not in the consumer's favor, that entails explaining the terms of the contract or the limitations of the law. As a result of these complaints, DIFFS was able to recover about $10 million for Michigan citizens last year. 
That is all insurance and finance complaints, not just health insurance, but it should give you an idea of the work being done here at DIFFS to protect consumers. When reviewing complaints, it is our goal to ensure the consumer is treated fairly and within standard business practices. Our licensees are complying with statutes and policy language, and the consumers understand applicable laws and policy language that pertain to their complaints. While we strive to mediate resolutions on behalf of consumers, there are some things we can do and some things we cannot do under the insurance code. We can investigate complaints against persons and business entities regulated by DIFFS. We can interpret statute. And we can bring administrative actions or refer to the Attorney General for civil or criminal prosecution. What we can't do. We cannot determine questions of fact. We cannot act as a court of law. We cannot act as an attorney or give legal advice. We cannot take action in matters currently in litigation. And we cannot review complaints involving policies issued in another state. In addition to the complaints process available to consumers with health insurance complaints, consumers also have appeals rights under Michigan statute. If a consumer has a denial, reduction, or a termination of a health care service, they can appeal. If a health care service was denied, reduced, or terminated, you can appeal this to the company. This is called an internal appeal. The first step is for you to submit your concerns in writing and be sure to include any documentation of your position. Your health carrier is required to make sure all steps in the internal grievance process are completed within 30 calendar days after the written request has been submitted if the grievance concerns a service that has not yet been received, or 60 calendar days if it concerns a service that has been received. The health carrier may take up to an additional 10 business days to obtain necessary medical information. The company then reviews the claim. The company notifies you in writing of the outcome. They may agree with your position and the matter ends there. If they still deny your service, they will notify you of the next steps. The next step in the internal appeal process may give you the right to appear before a designated person or managerial level committee. The health carrier is again required to notify you of its determination in writing and to advise you of your right to the external appeal process with DIFFS under the Patient's Right to Independent Review Act, also known as PRIRA. And here is a screenshot of the form you will fill out. You can mail, fax, or email it to us. And you can see there are several steps in this process. You are only eligible for the external review process if you have exhausted your health carrier's internal grievance process, or if it failed to complete the internal process under the time dictated by law, or if a carrier waives its internal grievance process or waives the requirement that a patient exhaust the process before seeking external review. That appeal should be in writing and include all necessary documentation. Our office will not seek out information to support your position. It is your responsibility to provide, for example, copies of bills, correspondence, medical records, etc. This request may be submitted to DIFFS within 120 days after you have received your health carrier's final adverse determination. On our Request for External Review form, if you prefer, you can authorize any person, such as a doctor, attorney, parent, or spouse, to represent you in the external appeal process. This authorized representative would then be the DIFFS sole contact in the process. Please note, you do not need to have an attorney represent you, but you are permitted to use one if you choose. Once the appeal is received, DIFFS has five business days to conduct a preliminary review to determine if you are eligible for the PRIRA external appeals process. DIFFS notifies your health carrier of the request and obtains pertinent information to help decide if the patient and health care service is eligible for a PRIRA external review. The request must meet these requirements. The issue must involve an adverse determination. The coverage involved must be subject to the Patient's Right to Independent Review Act. The patient must have been a covered person at the time the health care service was provided or requested. The health care service in question must reasonably appear to be a covered service under the contract or policy. The covered person must have exhausted the internal grievance process of the health carrier. And there are additional procedures that must be followed if the appeal involves experimental or investigational service or treatment. More information on this is available on our website. If your request is accepted and involves only contractual provisions of the contract or policy, the review is conducted by the Director of DIFFS. 
If your request is accepted and involves issues of medical necessity or clinical review criteria, it is review referred to an independent review organization or IRO. An IRO is an independent entity that has a contract with DIFFS to conduct independent medical reviews under PRIRA and make a recommendation to the director. The IRO uses medical professionals with expertise in the healthcare service at issue in the review. Again, DIFF staff will not investigate, contact medical sources, or seek out information to support your position. It is your responsibility to provide the pertinent documents such as bills, explanations of benefits, medical records, correspondence, statements from doctors, and research material to support your position. If the issue in the review is referred to an IRO, the health care is required to provide the IRO with the medical records and other documents it used to make its adverse determination. The IRO will use this information to make its recommendation. If an IRO is not contracted, the director of our department will issue a decision within 14 calendar days. If an IRO is contracted, the IRO is required to provide DIFFS with its recommendation within 14 calendar days. The director then issues a decision within seven business days after that. If either you or the company disagree with the decision, you can appeal in circuit court in the county where the covered person resides or in Ingham County within 60 days from the date of the decision. If it goes to court, DIFFS will not represent you. Recent statistics suggest one third of our external appeals cases result in either an overturn of the insurance company's position or a resolution in advance of the director issuing an order. DIFFS does have an expedited appeals process if the regular appeals timeline would seriously jeopardize your health, your life, or your ability to regain maximum function. A prior expedited external review is completed within 72 hours after your request, which DIFFS prefers in writing, has been accepted for expedited external review. To qualify for a prior expedited external review, you must have your physician verify orally or in writing that the time frame for a non-expedited prior external review would seriously jeopardize your life or health. A prior expedited external review is only granted when the issue involves health care services that have not already been provided to the patient and the issue involves medical necessity of a serious medical condition. The same form is used. As I mentioned earlier, we can assist with some Medicaid issues, but not all. Medicaid beneficiaries are able to use our department's internal and external appeals process and our complaints process as well. We will take these appeals and we will use contract language and the provider manual to review and rule on an appeal. Medicaid has its own appeals process and Medicaid beneficiaries can avail themselves of both processes simultaneously. Still have questions? DIFFS has answers. We have additional information available on our website, and we have a toll-free hotline staff, staffed by real-life human beings that can talk through your questions. We even have an insurance analyst on duty that can handle more complex questions. To reach uh, our call center, we are available 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And finally, here is the website and toll-free number, and we are active on Facebook and Twitter, and here are the social media handles for that. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.